The coastal marshlands of New Jersey provide critical habitat for a plethora of bird species, both residential and migratory. The isolation from modern society, as well as the ample supply of food, make this ecosystem the perfect habitat for some of our most unique avians. Here in Egg Harbor Bay, just outside Ocean City, you can find many of these birds feeding and nesting. Wading birds will nest in trees on the marsh's various forested islands, in large colonies known as rookeries. Each spring, large numbers of birds will return to these grounds to breed and raise the next generation. Perhaps the most majestic and beloved of these is the great egret. Great egrets are America's second largest heron, standing at around three to four feet tall, with a four to five foot wingspan, just slightly smaller than their cousin, the great blue heron, another marshland resident. Egrets are famous for their all white feathers. The exact purpose for this bold plumage is unknown, but some believes it helps them to sneak up on unsuspecting fish, or to keep cool in hot weather by reflecting warmth from the sun. During the breeding season, these birds will also grow in breeding plumage, known as aigret, a French word which is where the bird derives its name. The beautiful feathers have captured the interest of photographers and bird watchers alike. However, interactions between man and egret were not always so peaceful. In the early 1900s, egrets were killed in the United States simply for their feathers, which would adorn women's hats. Thousands of these birds were slaughtered, leading to the near extinction of both the great and snowy egret. Eventually, conservation-minded people helped bring an end to commercial hunting, and later pushed for the preservation of our wetlands. Today, the great egret is thriving with around 200,000 birds in the United States alone. They are especially common in New Jersey's various wetland ecosystems and are an icon of the saltwater marsh. Mid-April here in Egg Harbor Bay is the egret's breeding season. It is now when males will claim nest sites and attempt to attract females. Great egrets are seasonally monogamous meaning that they will breed and remain with the same female for the duration of the breeding season. Both sexes have grown in their breeding plumage, as well as a vibrant green patch of skin in front of their eye. With no time to spare, the males attempt to attract a mate through various peculiar displays. With plumes fanned out, he performs a bobbing dance. Egrets, as with most wading birds, will construct their nest on islands high up in the trees, where nest predators like raccoons won't have access. The male egret chooses the nesting spot and will go out to collect sticks and branches as the female assembles the nest. Once completed, the nest is typically three feet wide and a foot deep. Tired after all the hard work, the female egret takes a nap while incubating her newly laid eggs. However, trying to catch them sleep in a rookery can be very difficult. They have a wide variety of colorful and oftentimes noisy neighbors. This is the red-winged blackbird, a common species on the marsh that is more often heard rather than seen. The male will sing all day, not only to attract a mate, but also to warn other males that this is his territory. The latest resident here is the white ibis. Typically a more southern species, the white ibis has begun to move further north in recent years, expanding its breeding range. Since 2021, the white ibis has been nesting here, 
at the Ocean City Rookery. Their cousin, the Glossy Ibis, has been nesting in the Garden State for nearly a century longer. This bird, originally from the Old World, came to America on their own two wings, first arriving in South America and eventually expanding their range northward. They can be identified by their black bills, brown neck and bodies, and iridescent green wings. In the marsh, they forage alongside the white ibis, swaying their curved bill through the water, probing for prey. Ibis feed on invertebrates, small fish, and sometimes even snakes. Among the trees, the black-crowned night heron preens its feathers. As the name implies, these birds are most active by night, using their red eyes to find prey. Their slightly rarer cousin, the yellow-crowned night heron, can be identified by their yellowish cap and black mask. This breeding pair switches off nest duties as one incubates the eggs, the other heads out into the marsh to hunt. Yellow crowns feed mainly on crustaceans, and crabs such as this fiddler are very plentiful in the marsh. With keen eyesight, the heron searches for crabs until it finds one. It remains motionless, poised to strike at the perfect moment. Without teeth, the heron will usually swallow the crab whole. However, this individual is larger and requires a bit of extra work to remove some claws and limbs. With a belly full of crab, the heron will return to the rookery. In five weeks time, the island is now clothed in green shrubbery. In this time also, many of the egret eggs have hatched, revealing odd looking creatures that look almost prehistoric. Since they cannot yet fly, they won't be able to hunt for themselves and will rely on their parents to feed them. At this age, their diet consists of regurgitated fish. Sibling rivalry in the egret nest is serious business, with some chicks even killing their nestmates for food. This is known as siblicide, an unfortunate reality for many young birds, but one that ensures that the strongest carry on and someday reproduce. These two nestlings decide to venture out of the nest onto a nearby branch, exploring their little island for the first time. They are flightless now, but will soon grow in their flight feathers and take to the sky like their parents. The great egret in flight is undoubtedly one of the most breathtaking sights in nature.
By summer's end, these birds have grown in their flight feathers and will take on the journey south, only returning in spring in order to continue their cycle of life. If you want to observe the nesting egrets for yourself, check out the Ocean City Visitor Center in late April and May. Here you can get a close-up look at one of nature's most incredible events. Be sure not to be too loud and never cross over into the nesting area, as it may scare away the animals, leaving the nests unattended. Unattended nests could lead to the death of many of these chicks. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and comment any egret questions you might have.